ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Dr. Pepper. And welcome to a chilly Columbia, Missouri. We've got mid-20s tonight for senior night, the penultimate home game of the season for Mizzou, honoring 21 of those seniors, including Barrett Bannister on offense, Isaiah McGuire on defense. He's going pro. He's already said it. The team MVP defensively last year. He's been balling again this year for Mizzou. As they seek bowl eligibility with wins in their final two games, they play host to New Mexico State tonight. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. What's happening, everyone? Happy Saturday night. Hope you're nice and warm in your living rooms at home. Drew Carter, big foe, Forrest Conley, the national champ with Florida State. Glad to be here at Memorial Stadium at Mizzou. And Forrest for Mizzou, they've made a bowl game each of the first two seasons under Eli Drinkwitz. They need to win their last two to do it again. They definitely do. They went into the Tennessee game last week, kind of Lloyd Christmas-like. I think we have a chance, and it all fell apart. So they want to come out and have a big ball game, and they've got a game, New Mexico State Ball Club, that's on a winning streak of their own that's trying to get a win and trying to get to bowl eligibility as well. That's right. Aggies have won a few in a row, but on the Tigers' side, their fans are really excited about their quarterback, Brady Cook. They did get boat race down the stretch at Tennessee, but this guy played great. Well, one thing I like about Brady Cook is his running ability. They come into the Tennessee game last week against a ball club that only gave up 90 yards rushing the game. He had 106 yards on 16 carries. And then what was most impressive about his runs is he didn't run out of bounds. He didn't look to slide. He looked to run through defenders. So I like the moxie and the toughness of this kid, and I expect to see some more of that this afternoon. Yeah, Cook is a lifelong Mizzou fan, grew up coming to games here and watching the Tiger Walk. He started every game for Mizzou this season, and he's playing his best football as of late. Now, on the, the other side of the backfield with the running backs, we might be seeing a bit of a different approach for the Tigers with a little more explosiveness. We might see more of Tavares Jones as opposed to Cody Schrader. We'll keep an eye on that tonight. But if they're going to run the ball against this New Mexico State team, it's going to be hard because of those linebackers. Well, you talk about the linebackers, Ojo and Brohart, and you've got to love these guys. Ojo, he's the guy with the wiggle. He's the one that's going to come with the blitz package. He's the one that's going to put pressure on the quarterback. And Brohart, six foot three, 235 pounds. He's the anchor and the heart and soul of this defense. It is Saturday night in Columbia, and it is senior night. Mizzou trying to win two in a row and lock up bowl eligibility. New Mexico State trying to shock the world. Kickoff is next. Welcome back to Faro Field at Memorial Stadium in Columbia, Missouri, where a cold front has rolled in. It's mid-20s for kickoff between the Tigers and the Aggies. And look who it is, Jerry Kill. If you're a big college football fan, you recognize the name. He spent some time as the head coach at the University of Minnesota, led the Gophers to their first New Year's Day bowl game since 1962. That was back in 2015, and they played Mizzou. That was before Eli Drinkwitz took over as head coach of the Tigers. He is an offensive wizard, and he will be calling the plays for Mizzou tonight, trying to make a bowl for the third time in as many seasons as the Tigers head coach. That's what Big Foe wanted to dress like tonight, but then he thought better of it. Absolutely not. I have a Florida State education, and that taught me to dress appropriately <laughs> <laughs> and make sure I take care of myself. The holidays are coming, and I don't want to be sneezing and coughing. <laughs> In Tallahassee, like 75 is jacket and scarf weather, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but this is great football weather. If you're an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, this is what you like. And those are the tough guys. Those are the guys I expect to see with short sleeve shirts on. Guys expected to give it everything that they've got and show that they are the tough guys in the trenches. That's right. Come out, prove a point. Now, it's worth noting Mizzou has played in some inclement conditions on this field this year. Remember that Vanderbilt game when the Commodores only lost a one by three. Vanderbilt looks great, by the way. They beat Florida today. There was swirling winds that knocked a kickoff back, and Vandy actually recovered their own kickoff. So no strangers to playing in some strange conditions here at Mizzou. The Tigers won the toss and elected to defer. So New Mexico State will start with the football.
underway on a Saturday night in Como on senior night for Mizzou and New Mexico State will begin at the 25. So for Jerry Kill, it's been a long winding road to get to New Mexico State in his early 60s now. He was successful at both Southern and Northern Illinois and then won the victory bell as part of his time at Minnesota. The Little Brown Jug over Michigan. He still has that in his office. Then he spent some time at TCU last year. He was their interim head coach for the last four games, went two and two. Got back into coaching. He says he's got one more turnaround in him, and this is a difficult job in Las Cruces, New Mexico. They're 125th out of 131 current FBS programs in winning percentage. Diego Pavia gets the nod at quarterback for the Aggies, and he loads it up on the first play, complete to the right sideline. And New Mexico State has a first down on the first play to Cordell David, the junior out of Winnie, Texas. And right now, early in this ball game, they come out with the unpredicted, the rollout for the quarterback. They get the ball to the outside. They want to get the ball to their playmakers. Now you give this Missouri defense something to think about early. Yeah, David's a guy who's really impressed this coaching staff. Pavia, also an interesting story, kind of like his head coach. They list him at six feet. You be the judge watching at home. And their first run is going to be stood up after no gain, maybe one yard for Jamani Jones. Isaiah McGuire, the best defensive player for Mizzou, was in there first. And you see what New Mexico State is doing earlier. They go four wides. They want to spread the defense out to try and create natural running lanes for the running back. But this Missouri defensive line is aggressive. They get up the field. There's no read and react. They are going after the ball carrier. Yeah, Blake Baker, first year as defensive coordinator for Mizzou. Pavia swings it out. Again, it's Jones. The Tulsa, Oklahoma native puts the shoulder down and gets near first down yardage. It'll set up about third down and two as we check out the impact players for both sides on defense from Mizzou. Two ends, McGuire and DJ Coleman have both been uber productive in their time. And then also Gavin Frakes, the other quarterback for New Mexico State. He's a big freshman, 6'4", 220 out of Norman, Oklahoma. We should see some of him tonight. Now, D.J. Coleman, who we just mentioned as an impact player, the grad student from Atlanta, needs some help getting off the field. That'd be a big loss for them. Absolutely. D.J. Coleman, 6'5", 263 pounds. The thing that makes him special and difficult to block is he has extremely long arms. So as an offensive lineman, you can't get inside hands on him to try and direct him the way you want to go. So you've got to get a good butt to try and make him try and respond. And while he's reacting to that, get those inside hands. First third down tonight is a third and two. Pavia throws complete first down Aggies. That's the tight end Tomas Whitford to move the chains into Tigers territory as Martez Manuel brings him down. And what you see right here, you see the receiver, he's got man coverage. He's able to beat the defensive back to the inside and get his body in between the ball and the defender. That's what you want to do on those short yardage plays. You want to get your body in between the defender and the football. That way he has to try and fight around you while you get possession. For us, that's a good matchup for New Mexico State against Tyron Hopper, the weak side linebacker at 221. Back on the ground for the Aggies right up the middle with Jamani Jones again. He's got tons of leg drive and power for four yards. And at six foot two, 225 pounds, he is a bigger back. Early in this ball game, this New Mexico State offensive line is getting good movement at the point of attack. I like what I'm seeing. They're coming out with flat backs and they're making contact on that second step. Yeah, both their, their running backs atop the depth chart for New Mexico State are big. Star Thomas is also 225. So far, though, it's been all Jones again on second down. He gets the call, and he's wrangled down between the hashes after a short gain to set up third down and manageable by Trajan Jeffcoat, being celebrated on senior night tonight. Another third down and two. Last time they went to the tight end. This time they go up the middle again, but it's incomplete. Jonathan Brady, the freshman from Vegas, had it go through his hands. Manual on the coverage. And now decision time for Coach Kill. 
and once again, they go four wise. They spread the defense out. You've got man coverage on the outside. That was a good pass. Brady has to squeeze the football. Now, we have to remember the elements have an effect on the football. That's a hard ball out there with how cold it is, but that's a catch that he has to make, especially in a ball game like this where you're not going to get that many opportunities. Coach Kill leaves the offense out. It'd be about a 53-54 yarder. Ethan Albertson's career long is 50, and it's cold tonight. Play clock's at five. Pavia looks to throw, checks it down, dropped again. It was the running back, Jones, who had it in his mitts and would have had a first down. Instead, it's a turnover. And once again, those are the plays that you have to make in a ball game like this. You're only going to get as many opportunities. You see right here, he's open. You've got to squeeze the football. You've got to get possession before you go to make the play. Now, I understand he wanted to turn up the field and get the first down, but you've got to get possession of that football. Let's go. All right, so now we get our first look at Mizzou's offense following the turnover on downs. And Brady Cook, the sophomore from St. Louis. And they start with a jet sweep to the do-everything freshman Luther Bird in the third, who is one of the best recruits in Mizzou history this year, ushered out of bounds by Andre Selden after a solid gain on first down. What do you like about Brady Cook's game, Big Phil? Well, I like his moxie, and I like his playmaking ability, and I like the fact that he's not scared to do whatever he needs to do to help his offense be successful. And as an offensive lineman, when your quarterback does that, you get a little extra oomph about yourself about going and knocking somebody down. He keeps it here, and he can't run. There goes Brady Cook, slides down near the New Mexico State 40-yard line. And like we talked about in the open with Brady Cook, he's one of those guys. He's got quick feet. When he makes that decision on that RPO, he puts his foot down in the ground, and he gets north and south, and he runs with aggression. I like the fact that he slid on that play. You don't need to take any unnecessary contact as the quarterback. That was a gain of 15 for Cook, who Won the starting job in a competition in the offseason and has started now all 11 games for Mizzou. He keeps it again here on the sprint boot. Thought about throwing and now just ices it out of bounds. And Cook's decision making has really improved. We showed you no turnovers on Rocky Top last week. You saw in the numbers, he does have seven interceptions this year, but still a first year starter. This guy's learning on the job. And the one thing about him running the football, if he continues to run with effectiveness, now you make the New Mexico State defense start to put a spy and they have to keep someone in to try and monitor him so that takes away one of their defenders they send the running back Cody Schrader in motion Cook will tuck it and run again you saw the speed but he got chopped down in a hurry as he tried to get the edge Bryce Jackson the UNLV transfer made the stop to bring up third down and ten you see the impact players a couple Players on the back line, Andre Seldon, the nickelback transfer from Michigan, Cyrus Dumas, a transfer from Independence Community College, and then those wide receivers, as the defensive coordinator, Nate Dryling, called them, war daddies. Those two guys can make plays on the outside for Mizzou. And you know what was interesting? When we talked to Coach Kill, he said, look, we can't cover those receivers. Yeah. <laughs> so Nobody I can. To, yeah, so I expect to see safety help over the top. And also, you want to get good play from your defensive line. So on third and long, they keep it on the ground with Schrader. Looked like the ball might have come out for a second. Lazarus Williams made the tackle for New Mexico State. You see, good job by the offensive line. They've got the defenders covered up, but a great job by the defender to strip the football as he's making the tackle. That's what you have to look for as well in a game like this with the cold weather. It's hard to squeeze that football because it's so hard because it's cold out there. So the backs have to do a good job of keeping it high and tight because these defenders will be raking at the football. I think Coach Drink was going for it all the way, calling a run on third down and ten. Now fourth down and five, the offense stays out there. Under five on the timer. Cook pumps. Now throws. It is caught. First down, Mizzou. And that's Barrett Bannister. What do they say? Third and Bannister. Well, how about fourth and Bannister as the senior converts for a gain of 16? And that was a veteran play by Cook. You saw the pump fake. He did not see exactly what he wanted. He surveyed the field. He went through his progressions, and he found his receiver down the field, Bannister, to get the first down. It's a nifty throw to threaden that needle. Trevor Brohard, number 80, almost got a hand on it. Now first down and 10. Cook will run again. Sheds two Aggies. 
hit the circle button made the spin move after a solid gain to set up second and short Bryce Jackson finally dragged him down and those are one of those excitement plays as an offensive lineman when you see your quarterback running hard like that that you get that little extra push to go out and do something special so you've got to love what Cook brings to this offense what he makes defenses have to prepare for and have to game plan and kind of change up throughout the game to try and stop him and slow him down. Coming up on midway through this first quarter, Mizzou driving. And now we get our first penalty. Remains second down. That's Ryan Horsecamp, retro freshman wide receiver who pushes Mizzou back five. A big foe as a former offensive lineman. Did you like blocking for mobile quarterbacks? Absolutely. Charlie Ward made us look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get beat on a play, you know, your quarterback can outrun or fake out the defender. So, you know, you just have to keep blocking. And that's the one thing about a mobile quarterback. You just have to keep blocking, keep running through the play, knowing that your quarterback can make something special happen. On the ground again for Mizzou, that was Nathaniel Pete, the Stanford transfer, who got tripped up by Linwood Crump, the seventh year senior on his third school to bring up third down. And if Crump doesn't trip him up, I don't see any other defender in front of him. He may still be running. We may be looking at a Missouri celebration for a touchdown. So that was a great play by Crump to get that shoestring tackle. Another third down for Mizzou. And now a timeout by New Mexico State. New Mexico State. This is their first charge timeout of the half. So the defensive coordinator, Nate Dryling and company, will talk things over before a third down and four. Mizzou on the move. Extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. And while we were away, Missouri honoring its Hall of Fame class, and look who it is, Gary Pinkle, not only honored as a Mizzou Hall of Famer this year, also went into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 2022. One of the best coaches in college football history, 15 seasons here with the Tigers. Under seven minutes to play in this first quarter. Brady Cook looks to throw and completes. He put it right on the money for Toski Dove, one of the 21 Tigers celebrating senior night tonight. That moves the chains. And a great job by Cook. He fired the ball in there only where Dove can make a play on it. And you have to be careful when you're making those plays and making that throw because you've got linebackers and safeties converging on him in the middle of the field. They bring Mookie Cooper in motion. And Cook rolls that way. That was a flutter ball after it got tipped incomplete. It was the tight end Kibet Chepiator who had a chance at it, but Bryce Jackson again was around the ball. And one of the things I see early in the ball game, watch the offensive linemen. They're firing off, they're selling the run. Often when you see play action, offensive linemen don't sell the run, so the defenders aren't fooled. But when those linemen fire off with that flat back, that sells the run. That's why we're seeing these receivers open, op excuse me, open very often with the play action game. That was a great play by Donovan King to get his mitts on it. It's the 11th play of the drive. They swing it out to Bird, and he's so dangerous with the ball. There goes the freshman. Airborne for six. Now I'm going to tell you what's special about this play. Watch Burden on this play. He's got an offensive line convoy, but he doesn't follow those guys. He goes to the outside and makes it special, jumping over defenders. If he follows those linemen, he's basically walking into the end zone. But when you're a special player like Burden, you know how to get to where you need to get to, and you saw it on that play. The thicker kicker, Harrison Mevis, stacks on the extra point. Hey, style points count, right, Big Fo? Absolutely. Those are the type of plays that get you on highlight reels. You see him get to the field, avoid his line, jump over defenders, and here you go, touchdown. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. 
good start to senior night for Mizzou. 11 plays, 64 yards, just over five minutes on their first drive. Ends with a Luther Burden 12 yard touchdown around the right side that included a successful fourth down conversion for Eli Drinkwood's team. Drew Carter, Forrest Conley back with you from a chilly Como. Mid 20s as the temperature continues to drop. Jonathan Brady back to receive for New Mexico State and he brings it out just past their own 20. That's where Diego Pavia and the Aggies offense will take back over. And Pavia is a really interesting guy. If you were watching last year in the NJCAA D1 National Championship, you saw him lead the New Mexico Military Institute to their first ever national championship. They beat the one seed, the powerhouse Iowa Western Community College. He led the Broncos to the championship, and it's just fascinating to me. A guy comes from a military institute to a more traditional school in New Mexico State. He is a very disciplined player, and we do have an injured Tiger on the field after the kick. So before New Mexico State starts offensively at the 21, we hope that injured Mizzou player is okay. There is Diego Pavia and we were asking their offensive coordinator Tim Beck about him and said hey is he the most disciplined guy you've ever coached coming from a military institute he said yeah he knows when to get serious but he's also a jokester he told us a story about when Pavia was new at New Mexico State he convinced a campus police officer to come into Beck's office and say he had arrested the quarterback and then eventually he cracked and uh, Tim Beck realized he was joking. I don't know if I would do that. I don't, yeah, I don't know about that either. <laughs> That's a bit much. But Pavia keeping the mood light. I don't know if you could have gotten away with that at uh, New Mexico Military Institute. They take over with just over six to play in the first quarter. Pavia is a threat to keep it, but this time he gives it to his running back who continues to drive the legs. And that is Star Thomas, the other part of this thunder and thunder duo along with Jamani Jones. You see the power by Thomas right here. He keeps his feet moving, he keeps his feet turning. And I like the action by the offensive line. Go and get you something, number 71. I like that. When you see your guy doing and giving everything he's got, you've got to go out there and find some contact, find some work. So I love the play from the offensive lineman getting out there and finding somebody to hit. And it was Shiza Pete, the redshirt freshman from Missoula, Montana, number 71. Now on second down and six, Pavia has to escape and just spikes it. It didn't get back to the line of scrimmage as he was under duress. Realist George Jr. was in there with a bunch of Tigers. Well, they were trying to set up the screen pass, but the offensive lineman did not sell it. You've got to sell the screen. So what you've got to do as a lineman, you've got to act like you're trying to make the block, but allow the defender to get up the field. You allow the aggression to take place. But you saw some of the defenders were not sold. They set back, and that was a good job by Pavia getting rid of the football, not trying to get it to his back because he would have had nowhere to go, and they probably would would have lost guards on that play. It brings up third down. Mizzou, one of the best defenses in the country in this scenario. Cordell David, the motion man. Pavia to throw on third down and six. Escapes. Keeps. He's got room. Hurdles Pavia with a first down. Aggies. Everyone's going over the top tonight. And you see the deceptive quickness by Pavia. He doesn't see anything that he likes, and that's the veteran leadership that he brings to this ball club with those years playing junior college ball and playing and winning a championship. You saw his ability to get down the field. He knew where he needed to get for the first down. You saw the athletic ability to jump over the defender to not allow him to get a clean hit on him. That one went for 12, and it was another highlight. Luther Burden hurdled for a touchdown earlier in this quarter, and now Pavia's got one. It sets up first down, and Pavia throws on the rollout, and that's incomplete up the sideline. Chris Abrams' drain was in coverage against Cordell David, the receiver. And that was a dangerous throw by Pavia. You're throwing across the field. You've got wind out here, so you have to throw a tight spiral when you're trying to get the ball across the field. Abrams' drain in the coverage is one of the best in the SEC. In fact, this cornerback duo, he and Ennis Rakestraw Jr. are tied for second in the SEC with 11 passes defended. Only Kool-Aid McKinstry of Alabama has defended more.
Now Pavia gives it on the jet sweep, and that's blown up in a hurry. Mizzou read it like a book. Jonathan Brady was going nowhere. DJ Coleman back in there. Good to see him make a play. Interesting play call. They're trying to get to the outside on the boundary side of the field. I think you're going to run that play to the wide side to give your offensive player more room to operate in space. When you've got a speed team, a team like Missouri, defensively that gets up the field, it's very difficult to get to the edge of the defense. Aggies milk the play clock again. Third down and eight. Pavia with more space. Opts to throw for it. Incomplete. Again, it was on the hands of a receiver. David couldn't squeeze it. Abrams drain in coverage. Pavia now 0 for his last five after a 3-for-3 three three start. Now he was open. Pavia had everything that he wanted on that play. You've just got to get the ball up to allow David to make the play on the football. Very difficult to reach down when you're running towards the sideline and pull that ball up. You've got to get the ball up to your receiver. Might have had a chance to set his feet, too. He had a lot of room there, Pavia, on the rollout. Well, and that's the result of pressure that he's seen prior to that pass. And that's what happens. You know, a quarterback is used to seeing pressure. He thinks he's going to see pressure again, and he gets rid of the ball prematurely. Josh Carlson's punt pushes Burden inside his own 20, and Mizzou will start at the 19 after a 43-yard punt and a fair catch. The Tigers on top by a touchdown. Wednesday, it's the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Hopefully they have more time to break it down than they did last time when the basketball game went to double overtime in front of them. Let's check out this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A and check out number five, Tennessee, trailing South Carolina in the second quarter in Columbia, not this Columbia, that Columbia, South Carolina and the Gamecocks have the football. Brady Cook loads up and throws, trying to find Dominic Lovett incomplete. That was a dangerous pass with two Aggies in coverage, including Dylan early. But Big Foe, just going back to those rankings, I mean, if you want to know how fast Tennessee can flip the switch, just ask Mizzou. They're only down four in the third quarter. They ended up losing by 40 plus. And when you talk about chaos, what possibly could have happened today, the TCU football game yeah. against Baylor, the Michigan ball game today right. against Illinois and then Ohio State all the way down to the end when they got a late score against Maryland. I mean, that could have just changed everything. <laughs> I know. How many SEC teams is too many? Because with TCU lose or potentially losing, I mean, they just do it every week, man. Yeah. They can't keep getting away with it, right? Well, you know, the interesting thing that we're talking about is if, you know, all of these teams stay where they are and if LSU is able to upset Georgia, You've got an yeah. LSU team that beat at Alabama and Georgia. You've got Tennessee with one loss. You've got Georgia that's definitely getting in. Right. I mean, it's going to be a big question. And Georgia didn't even look great today. 16-6 over Kentucky is kind of reeling as of late. Here's third down and seven for Cook and Mizzou. That is complete short of the sticks. It's going to be close. It was complete to the running back, Nathaniel Pete. Chris Ojo on the tackle, and that will move the chance. And this is why you're going to see Ojo on Sunday, because of his ability to close. You see how he closes in on the receiver and is able to get him down and almost prevents him from getting the first down. He's in the middle of the field when the ball is released, and he's able to change direction. That's that quick twitch that they look for when you're looking for players to play on Sunday. And now a stoppage. Lee Hedrick is our referee. They might be looking at the spot. The ruling on the field is a close. catch and run for a first down. That play is under review. Well, what's going to be interesting as they look at the replay on this is, is it inconclusive? Because you've got to say without a doubt that he is not passed or at the first down marker. So right. that's going to be interesting to see if they have a shot that shows them something different than what was called on the field. Let's take another look. Nathaniel Pete, the running back, Chris Ojo in hot pursuit. That's going to be really tough to tell. Well, it's like he slung him and he held the ball out and then he rolls. So my thing is this. He's right there. He should be down because the defender is out of bounds. He's bringing him down. So it's going to be questionable. I just don't know if there's enough there to overturn how it was called on the field. It looked like he needed about the 29, and it's going to be close, and Lee Hedrick has a fast answer. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. 
Yeah, it was just going to be too tough to overturn. Yeah, it was just not enough there. Can I drop a hot take on you, though? Absolutely. I think inconclusive evidence is the stupidest term in, in football. <laughs> just look at it and make a decision, right? Why does it matter what the call on the field was if it was wrong? Right? We can all see it. <laughs> I know that's the official term, I, but I <laughs> you see what I mean? I, it took me a while when, they, when I first heard that term to kind of yeah. decipher what it really meant. Right. There's Pete again. This one is going to go for a loss of a couple as the Aggies swarm to the football. But I just feel like it, the I mean this isn't a courtroom. You know what I mean? Like well, if, you almost, can, if you can see it, it just overturn the call. Well, it almost sounds like you should say we need to have conclusive. Evidence right. As opposed to I think it is conclusive. Um, indisputable as well. Indisp okay. Indisputable. indisputable. Yeah. Okay. But that one was going to be tough to overturn regardless. Under two to play now in the first quarter. They send Pete in motion and throw it that way, but the throw is low from Cook, so this will bring up third down and long. And that was kind of a lazy throw from Cook. You've got to step into that throw. You can't just sling it out there. Once again, you've got to remember there's a bit of a wind out here. That's a heavy ball because of the weather. You've got to step into that throw and put more on it. And you want to put it in front of your receiver because you want him to get the ball in motion towards the line of scrimmage. Tigers were two for three on third down on their opening touchdown drive. Cook checks it down. Schrader's got room, finds the edge, and picks up the first down. The transfer from D2 Truman State moves the chains. Bryce Jackson will get credit for the tackle. And if you watch what Cook did on that play, he acted like he was going down the field with the vertical pass game. That bit of emotion right there that held that linebacker, that held the safety and the defensive back, and allowed for his back. Schrader to get the ball and get up the field. Those are the small intangibles that you don't see that help a ball club move the football down the field. They needed 13. They picked up 19. Now Cook with plenty of time after the play fake and he gets rid of it out of bounds and he is already pleading his case to the officials that Schrader was in the area to avoid intentional grounding. And Torin Union did a good job covering Schrader. He wanted to go to Schrader in the flat, but Torin Union went over with Schrader. He covered him up. He had nowhere to go with the football. So a good job by Cook getting rid of it, got it down the field, past the line of scrimmage. Cook last week statistically might have played his best game as a Tiger at Mizzou with a couple touchdowns and no turnovers. Now they hand it off right up the middle and it's Schrader to set up third down and about four. Gabe Peterson makes the tackle with under a minute to play in the first quarter. And it brings up another third down for New Mexico State. This is a big possession. I know it's early but not really a team built to play from behind. They want to slow it down and take the air out of the ball. Empty set for Cook on third down and four. Stands in, throws a dart complete. Again, it's the running back Schrader who couldn't elude the grasp of Trevor Brohard, but he has a first down for Mizzou. Another third down conversion. This one goes for 11. And he had Dominic Lovett on the post route. He didn't see him in the middle of the field. He had inside on the defensive back. If he throws the ball down, the field, I think Dominic Lovett catches it, and we're celebrating another Missouri touchdown. Instead, it's the final play of the first quarter. And kind of crazy big foe looked like he went through about three progressions before he went to Schrader just didn't see seven. I mean he was streaking down the <laughs> middle of the field. I'm sure when they go in the coaching staff is going to tell him hey look for that post route going down the middle of the field. But a good job so far by this Missouri offense and the defense has shut down this New Mexico State offense early in this ball game. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Second to last home game of the season for Mizzou as they celebrate senior night and they give it to Cody Schrader the Truman State transfer who fires through the middle for a solid gain on first down again Bryce Jackson makes the tackle from the safety position he's been busy Schrader's a great story he's got another year of eligibility didn't go through senior night festivities tonight four years at Truman State in Kirksville 
Missouri when he led the country among D2 players in rushing with over 2,000 yards last year. He moves the chains again here. And what I like about Schrader, he's a thump, rap, tackle, tackle back. You've got to thump him, you've got to wrap, then you've got to bring him down, tackle him. Again. Now the Tigers moving with pace. This time Schrader goes nowhere. Two or three Aggies in there. Devlin Kirkland was in there first. But we asked Coach Drink about Schrader yesterday and asked him about the expectations. Hey, listen, a D2 guy coming into the SEC, you don't really expect him to be the starter. And the Drink was pretty candid about that. But the key is Schrader expected to be the starter. And he has won that job over the course of the season. On second down and nine, Cook throws. That's Bannister again. So reliable out of the slot, dives forward to make it third down and one. And one of the things you like about these receivers, they don't just catch the football and foul, fall down. They're looking for yards after contact. You see the bounce. You see him using his left hand to stay up and get as many yards as possible. That's what you love about a guy like Bannister. I want to make all of the tough guy plays. That's what you're seeing from these receivers. On third down and one, Schrader straight into a mass of humanity. And that's enough to move the chains. Justin Segura. Redshirt Jr. from Scottsdale makes the tackle, but it's another first down for Missouri. They're now five for seven on third down tonight. Burden in motion. Instead, they go to Schrader. Finds a sliver of space down at the six-yard line. And the thing about that, when you bring Burden in motion, because of his speed and ability to get to the outside, the defense has to react until they're able to decipher that he does not have the football. When they're doing and going through their they're uh, trying to decipher where the ball is. Now you've got Schrader coming downhill. So that's what makes this offense very difficult to stop or either even just slow down. Again, it's Schrader. This time patient, then puts the head down, and he got stoned at the one. Again, it's Andre Seldon, the transfer from Michigan in there. And you see, once again, fall forward, thump, wrap, tackle. You've got to thump him, you've got to wrap him, you've got to tackle him, because if you don't, he's going to continue to grind his legs and fall forward. First and goal from the one, right back to Schrader, right into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. As an offensive lineman, I love what I saw in this play. Watch all the defensive linemen. They're going backwards. They're on skates. That's what you want to see. He was across the goal line and two to three yards into the end zone before he even saw a defender. So that is what you look for from offensive linemen on the goal line. You're basically bear crawling. You're thinking about all of that sled work that you do during the week, and you saw flatbacks fire off and give him what he needed to do, um, excuse me, the space he needed to walk into the end zone. At the Staples button because that was easy for Schrader thanks to that offensive line. Mevis adds the extra point. 14 zip Mizzou. Six touchdown of the season for Cody Schrader. I have no comment on those guys. Tonight, wrap up week 12 with SEC football final. Darren Elka, Chris Doring, Ben Watson, Takeo Spikes take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games. 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central after Ole Miss, Arkansas over on SEC Network and the ESPN app. And by the way, the Razorbacks leading the Rebels 14-3 in the first half. Arkansas comes here to wrap up the regular season next week. Mizzou leads 14-0 over to Mexico State. The Aggies will start at the 25. Drew Carter, Forrest Conley back with you at Furrow Field. And Big Foe, I think those guys we just saw are going to be at uh, Booch's well, after the game tonight. When I see him, I, all I think about is he, man. <laughs> Who, who's I? I am freezing <laughs> with a scarf, a sweater, and a jacket on. Yeah. He has nothing on. His head and his ears are covered. That's it. You know what he probably has that you don't, though? A few beverages in the system. Hey, man. Whatever it takes, buddy. Whatever it takes. Something to keep you warm. Now, there are two flags right around the 40. That's where the officials are congregating. And, you know, coming into this ballgame, I thought New Mexico State would try and speed the game up, take as much time as they could on offense. They haven't quite done that yet.
I would expect them on this drive, take their time, try and get this run established. They had the run that seemed like established early in the ball game. Try to get back to what they were doing early on that first drive where they got some positive yards. Because if you get the ball back to Missouri right now, this thing has, you know, a, a chance of getting away from them. I mean, extremely early right now. That's a great point. They want to run the ball. That's when they've been their most successful this year. They've run for over 100 yards in all four of their wins. And I think Diego Pavia is a key to that rushing attack. He had 81 yards last week. This one looked like a bit of a busted play, but it works perfectly for New Mexico State. Pavia scampers out of bounds with a first down. And that is what I'm talking about, his ability to get around the edge. You see, he turned the wrong way. Either he went the wrong way or the back went the wrong way, but he did not panic. And he was able to get to the outside, beat the defender, Jalen Carlisle, to the outside, get to the edge and get the first down and get them out of the shadow of their own end zone. Almost worked like a trick play. It just tricked both teams. Pavia, the only one who knew what was <laughs> happening, it ended up with a 13-yard gain. Right back on the ground, up the middle with Jamani Jones. And it's a strong gain on first down. And Arden Walker, the redshirt freshman D lineman, made the tackle as Mizzou will rotate a bunch of guys up front. Walker listed third on the depth chart. And that was a great job by the offensive lineman to kick out and get that blitz. He picked up the blitz, allowing the back to get up in the hole. Because if he doesn't pick up that blitz, that might be a tackle for a loss. Tigers bring five as the Aggies again run it, and this one goes for one. Again, it's Jamani Jones who's been their top option tonight. Chad Bailey, the senior from Missouri City, Texas, makes the tackle. And now, because they've been able to run the ball successfully on a couple of plays on this drive, you're now seeing Missouri put five guys at the line of scrimmage. You're seeing more players down closer to the box. This is when you'll have opportunities to get vertical with the passing game. Kind of a funky set here. That's David in motion. On third down and three. Pavia finds an opening, takes it, puts the head down. And I think he's got enough for the first down. He needed the 35, and he has it. And that's tough guy football because they were in cover one. So they had everybody up. They're playing man coverage. And you saw Pavia. He did not see what he wanted. And he instantly hit the scene and was able to get the first down. That is what you talk about when you talk about more of a veteran quarterback as opposed to Frakes. Pavia has seen a lot more, and you see, once again, his running ability helps this offense be more versatile. Here we go. Thought it was going to be some trickeration, but the Mizzou defense was not fooled. Bailey again to make the play as he was the only one who looked like he saw Pavia still had the ball. And it almost seemed like he should have went on and handed the ball off to John Brady. I thought John Brady had an opportunity to possibly get around the edge because he would have had a one on one with the defender coming towards him. And I think he may have been, you know, may have been able to be a better athlete on that play. Great play by Bailey. And Pavia was almost able to keep his balance. Yeah, Pavia, not an easy tackle. At the -yard line. But one of the things I don't like uh, that I've seen a couple of times, they're trying to get to the edge. Once again, when you've got a penetrating defense like Missouri, when you've got speed on the outside like they do with their linebackers, it's very difficult to get that edge. I think you need to hit it up the gut. Now second down and 14. Pavia under pressure. Throws toward the sideline incomplete. Almost a spectacular catch by Cordell David. But the throw is out of bounds and it brings up third down and 14. And a good job by number 11, Devin Nicholson. You see kind of the delayed blitz. He waits, he reads, and then he gets up the field and he puts pressure on Pavia, making him get rid of the football. Pavia never had a chance to step into that throw. Only 
one down lineman for Mizzou on this third down and 14. Pavia on the sprint out, throws on the run, floats it sideline incomplete. Chris Bellamy, number one, had the best chance at it, but it falls innocuously to the turf to bring up fourth down. And as an offensive lineman, when you've got one down lineman, you're trying to figure out who, during your pre snap read who you have to block. So that sense of trying to figure it out gives the defense time to get up the field and get pressure. So uh, they're, they're doing a lot of tricks. They're trying to make these guys think, and that's what you want to do. You want to make these linemen think and have to think about who they're blocking and what their blocking assignment is. Josh Carlson out of Gilbert, Arizona, punts it away. Luther Burden on the return. There is a flag down on the field. Burden sheds one tackle. And he's out near the 35, but the flag is all the way back near the punter. And I believe it will be a flag against the Tigers. Right now it's a 33 yard punt and a one yard return. And is it running to the kicker or is it a personal foul? I think it's going to be. There is no foul for roughing the kicker. The defender was blocked into the kicker. Jerry Kill not so sure about that flag being picked up. Either way, Mizzou will start at the 34-yard line, leading by a couple of touchdowns. Here's our college football award spotlight brought to you by the Home Depot featuring Missouri. Senior D-end Isaiah McGuire up for the Benaric Award. Goes to the best defensive player in the country. Dominic Lovett up for the Bolitnikoff on the watch list, which goes to the best wide receiver in the country. And then the thicker kicker, Harrison Mevis, on the watch list for the Lou Groza Award. And Dominic Lovett has really broken out this year for Mizzou, playing in his more natural slot position. He's top five in the league in receiving yards. One of the things that's impressive about Lovett, he's a hand catcher. He squeezes the football. Often you see guys let the ball get to their body. He catches the ball, he squeezes it. He's able to make moves in the open field, and he's fast enough to get to the end zone anytime he has the football in his hands. Remember to tune in for the Home Depot College Football Awards Show, Thursday, December 8th at 7 on ESPN. Brady Cook back to work at the helm of this Mizzou offense. And again, it's Cody Schrader falling forward for a gain of just one. We mentioned off the top that you might see more Tavares Jones, the true freshman from El Paso, who's only run three times this year. Coach Drinkwitz looking for maybe a little more explosiveness, but so far it's been Schrader, and so far he's been productive. Mizzou content to use some play clock here now midway through the second quarter. Cook takes the snap with three. Schrader around the left side wrestled down. And that was Chris Ojo, the sixth year senior. And that's that wiggle we're talking about. Ojo, it's very difficult to block him because he's able to wiggle, he's able to do it. Linebackers that are great do get skinny get to the edge he reads the play he reacts and he gets to the ball carrier and brings them down and their D coordinator Nate Dryling told us Ojo is super intense sometimes maybe even too intense he'll celebrate after every play he makes surprised he hasn't gotten a penalty for it yet let him play let him celebrate I'm it's with a it. game I'm with it third down and six Cook looks for options finds one hits the gas look at Brady Cook he does not seem like a QB when he's got the ball. He's got plenty of speed and knows how to use it. That one goes for 20. And he runs with aggression. I love it. He doesn't play around in the backfield. And once again, he's doing what I like to see from quarterbacks in the open field. Get down. Don't take unnecessary contact. You've got enough yards for the first down. Get down. Cooks up to 45 yards on the ground. On just four carries. And now he'll throw. Checks it down, Schrader. Picks up eight on first down to bring up second down and short. Tomorrow we've got the men's basketball game of the day. It's a good one. The first ever meeting between Kentucky and Gonzaga, a top five matchup. They agreed to a six year series in August. It's Oscar Shibwe against Drew Timmy, maybe the two front runners for National Player of the Year. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. And what a great matchup, Sheepway and Timmy, man. I mean, you're talking about great college basketball.
Here's Schrader falling forward again near the sticks. Sterling Webb on the tackle. Yeah. Oscar Shibway, kind of a mystery at the start of the year. He sort of had an injury. We didn't see him at media day. And then he came out, and in the first game he played, I think, against Michigan State, what, he, was, and 18 he was Oscar something Shibway crazy. again. Yeah. And he fouled out. He right. doesn't foul out. Excuse me, he doesn't foul out. Maybe they win that, that basketball game. Yeah, they lost in double overtime. Third down and one. Schrader dives ahead. First down, Tigers. Deliberate offense here for Mizzou. Riding Cody Schrader. That's so impressive. He played two seasons in 2021, the spring season and the fall season. And in the fall, he ran for over 2,000 yards to lead the country among D2 players. He's a blue collar toolbox type of guy. One of those guys that just loves to play the game. And you see it every time he carries the football. This time they fake it to him. Cook looks to throw on the drag route. That's complete. And that's a big play for Mizzou. And that's a touchdown. Ryan Horstcamp takes it the distance. And you know what was interesting about this play? Brady Cook had about four or five different receivers he could have went to. But I want you to watch Schrader on this play. Watch the block that he gets. And he lets go so he wouldn't get a penalty. Right there, that block right there is what allowed for Hostramp to get down the field to get the touchdown. Those are the intangible plays that you look for. It's not always about carrying the football, making the dynamic run, but making the play for your teammates on the outside to allow him to get to the end zone. And it allows Horsecamp to score his first career touchdown. It goes for 32 yards. Nevis adds the extra point. It is all Tigers to start. Congratulations to Ryan Horsecamp. Scores his first career touchdown tonight. It was a beauty, a 32-yarder up the left sideline, and the redshirt freshman from Washington, Missouri, into the end zone for the first time in his career. And the big fella looked impressive getting down the field. Oh, yeah, he was cruising. Sean Ketting kicks it away for Mizzou. Jonathan Brady lets it go through the end zone to Mexico State back to work offensively. And tomorrow we've got the women's basketball game of the day. Maybe the game of the year. Aaliyah Boston, number one, South Carolina, take on Haley Jones, Cameron Brink, number two, Stanford at Maples Pavilion. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC and ESPN app. Staley, Vanderveer, they've obviously got great teams, as they always do. Anytime number one and number two clash, you got to tune in. Important drive again for New Mexico State. Interesting play design that time as Pavia hands it to Tim Gans, the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. DJ Coleman makes the tackle for a loss of two. And that play was made by Darius Robinson, number six. He got so much penetration up the field, he made the back veer off where he was trying to get to, which allowed all of the other players to get there and all the pursuit to get there to make the tackle. Second down and 12. Again, it's a run, and again, it gets blown up. Robinson's in there again. And now you're starting to see offensive linemen get knocked backwards. You see the aggression and the up the field pressure by this defensive line. They're overpowering the offensive linemen for New Mexico State. For those offensive linemen, they've got to do a better job of keeping a flat back on the run game. They've got to fire off the football. They've got to be the first to make contact. When you allow defender to be the first to make contact, they're able to get inside hands, and they're able to direct the offensive lineman and take them where they want to go. So you've got to be able to fire off of that flat back and make contact when that second foot hits the ground. Play clock's at three. New Mexico State is still in the huddle, so they will call a timeout. New Mexico State, this is their second charge timeout of the half. Jerry Kill uses his second timeout of the first half.
And Drew, how important is this third down right there? This is a third down where you definitely know they need to throw the football to get the first down. I don't think they can run and get the first down. You're talking about 14 yards. But if you do not get this first down, you give this high-powered Missouri offense that has looked good tonight running and throwing the football, the ball back with three minutes to go before halftime, which can possibly lead to another score. So even if New Mexico State does not score on this drive, I think it's really important that they get the right play and try and get a first down and extend this drive. Don't give the ball back to Missouri, because if you do, I think there possibly will be another score before we go to halftime. Eli Drinkwitz has to be thinking he's got all three of his timeouts. They stop here and they've got a chance to add to this lead. Four wide for Pavia. Tigers bring five. Pavia throws complete over the middle. First down, Aggies in a big collision as Abrams Drain makes the tackle. And it all started up front with that offensive line. They did a good job of giving him the time that he needed to get the ball down the field. He knew where he wanted to go at the football. The time that they gave him allowed for the receiver to clear the defenders. That was a 25 yard gain. It was J.J. Jones on the big pitch and catch and now a first down run for New Mexico State. Kanan Yaro the center. Has to head off after losing his helmet. A gain of two after the gain of 25 on third down and 14. New Mexico State not in a hurry. Trying to make sure they don't give it back. To the Tigers. Pavia on the keeper. Plants his foot, makes the Tiger miss, puts the shoulder down out of bounds. Again, Abrams drain the last line of defense, but Pavia showing some wiggle. And you know, in film room, <laughs> the defensive Ooh. player right there, he's going. <laughs> DJ Coleman's going to have to deal with, uh -huh. with some of his teammates. Le left the laundry on the deck. Might <laughs> yeah. have left the long johns on the deck on this 25 degree you know, night. His ankles are out there on the 50 yard line right now. <laughs> Woo. Now, under two minutes, the clock will stop if the Aggies go out of bounds. Play clock winds again. They snap it with three. Pavia keeps it. Tests that right side and has a first down near the Mizzou 40. And a good job by the offensive lineman firing off. Ever since that third down, they seem to have gotten a little bit more, you know, a little bit more aggression. They're firing off the football. They're finding work. You've got to find work. If you don't know who to hit, hit somebody with a different color jersey. But you've got to find work because when you do, when you have dynamic players with the football in their hands, they will make a play for you. Eight Tigers in the box. Play clocks at three. Pavia looks to throw. Up the seam incomplete. Abrams drain in coverage. Justice Powers, whose name we haven't said until now, he's their leading receiver, and he was the intended target that time. In pre-snap, it looked like the defense was confused, but they were on top of every one of these receivers. There was really nowhere for Pavia to go with the football. A good job by the defender trying to make a play on it, Abrams Drain, but you know, there was nowhere to go with the football. Like I said, once again, if you're on the offense, you see everybody pointing around and trying to figure out who to cover and who to cover, but they ended up covering up every receiver down the field. There's a second pass breakup tonight for Abrams Drain is 13th of the season. Pavia throws again trying to find powers and again it's broken up. That time it was Ennis Rakestraw Jr. who gives a fist bump to a cheerleader. And Rakestraw one of the more confident players you know, right there he does a good job of staying on top of the receiver. He did not panic. He looked back and found the football. Something you 
don't see defensive backs doing often in today's game. They panic and they run through the receiver. He looked back to try and make a play on the football. So if there was contact, that will not get called because he has just as much right to the ball as the receiver does. Third down and 10. Pavia hit as he throws, incomplete. That was dangerous. Dalen Carnell had a chance at it, went airborne to try to pick it. So it's a fourth down. And Pavia, this is what quarterbacks do not want to see the front of their offensive lineman's jerseys because that means those guys have turned around to see where the defender is that just beat them <laughs> at the point of attack. That's the old lookout block. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're making a couple plays, horse camp. Make a couple of plays. Toski Dove is also dangerous. I mean, this is a deep core. And what they're doing, they're catching the ball with their hands. And that's what you don't see often. Guys hand catching. I love that. That's a tricky play, and it sets up Bannister with tons of space. Brings it inside the New Mexico State 25. Bryce Jackson made the tackle after they faked it to Burden and gave it to 11. And you see the fake on the inside right there, the fake uh, jet sweeping in. They get the shovel pass going. They're bringing out all the tricks right now. It goes for 17. That one was like right out of the Andy Reid playbook. Eric B. Enemy with KC. Well, that jet sweep action gets the attention and makes the eyes of the linebackers and the safeties follow. There's Schrader again falling forward. That's what these Mizzou ball carriers do. Andre Seldon with the tackle. Seldon, the Michigan transfer. He's a four star recruit coming out of high school as New Mexico State will make some wholesale changes and. They try to get a bunch of guys experience as Jerry Kill tries to turn this program around. It's one of the toughest jobs in FBS. Currently an independent. They're moving to Conference USA next year. Empty set now for Cook. Quick pass to the slot. And Luther Burden, he's got a convoy, and he gets dropped. Just shy of the 10, but it's a first down. Mizzou, Keyshawn Elliott saved a touchdown. And you know what's interesting, Coach Kill said he would not have taken this job if they weren't going to Conference USA. So you think about that, and here's Luther Burden once again. <laughs> you know, he, he makes <laughs> the special play. He doesn't follow his blockers. He wants to go and make the special dynamic <laughs> play. <laughs> that time he did follow his blockers just a little bit. Back on the ground with Schrader. Off tackle to the right side. Grinding forward for a gain of seven on first down brings it to the five yard line. Shred is one of those ball carriers that it hurts to tackle. Once again, I call him a thump, wrap, tackle guy. You can't just hit him. You've got to thump him and let him know you're there. You've got to wrap him up and then you've got to try and bring him down. I hope that pursuit from your teammates comes to help because this guy keeps churning his feet. He's thick at 5'9, 214. And they give it right back to him. Schrader puts the head down. Touchdown, Mizzou. Schrader second tonight. We'll take another look at it. This could be close. Well, he's twisting, he's turning, he's falling forward. He's not going down. That is definitely a touchdown, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, He's playing blue collar lunch pail football out here. A nice drive to start the second half for Mizzou goes 69 yards on nine plays in just over four minutes. Harrison Mevis adds the extra point. Cook was four for four for 46 yards on the drive. It's capped off by a Cody Schrader touchdown his second tonight. All Tigers at home. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Mizzou 28, New Mexico State zilch. Early second half here at Faro Field at Memorial Stadium. Drew Carter, Forrest Conley back with you on a chilly, brisk, downright cold, I'm going to say it, night here in Columbia. About 25 degrees as night has fallen. Thank you. Get away from chilly yeah, and brisk and just say up. it's cold. It's straight up. <laughs> it's really cold. cold. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> and Jerry Kill's got the beanie hat on now. Jerry Kill's a fascinating guy. He's in his early 60s now. He reached the pinnacle of the profession coaching a Power 5 team at Minnesota. And 
He says he's got one more turnaround in him here at New Mexico State. You mentioned it, Big Fo. He would not have taken this job if New Mexico State weren't joining Conference USA, but they are next year. They're done with this independent thing. They're back in a league. And you got to love Coach Kill. He accepted the challenge. Diego Pavia starts with a handoff. That's Jamani Jones who says, get off me, and picks up six on first down. But I mean, challenge is the right word for it. I mentioned earlier, New Mexico State is 125th out of 131 FBS programs in terms of all time winning percentage. And in Las Cruces, not exactly a recruiting hotbed. So it's a tough job. And Jerry Kill has been known for False start on the offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty remains second down. But one of the things when you talk to Coach Kill, you get the sense that he kind of comes in with the idea of we can't worry about what has already happened. We have no control over that. All we can worry about is what we control. And that is how we develop as a unit and as a team moving forward. talked to him about turning programs around and he gave us really the blueprint for how to do it and again this guy's been very successful remember at Minnesota they were in the dumps before he got there here's Pavia around the right side it'll set up third down and long so if you're watching at home and you want to turn a football program around here are Jerry kills keys to success Is tasked with changing the culture at New Mexico State. Won three games in a row here, putting a nice little spurt together. But he knows it'll be an uphill climb to get this Aggies program where he wants it to be. He is confident they'll do it, though. Third down and seven. Pavia finds space and picks up a first down. You've got to love this kid. He's a tough football player. He's just a, a, a guy that loves the game. You can tell the way he plays it. And that was a designed quarterback draw. They spread the defense out. He saw the lane, the scene that he needed, and he got just enough to get the first down and extend his drive. Interesting note about Jerry Kill as well is he actually hasn't signed a contract yet. That story came out this week and picked up some traction. He said he had no idea. No one ever talked to him about it. And he was listed as having no comment as that is complete over the middle for a first down. J.J. Jones again takes it into Mizzou territory. But it was a USA Today article where they said they reached out to Jerry Kill for comment and they didn't receive word. He was like, I had no idea they were writing the article. <laughs> but you know what was interesting too? He said, you know, in order to rebuild a program or get a program going in the right direction, everyone has to buy in. And he said that is what he's seeing from his players. They're buying in to what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build. Midway through the third, Pavia tried to escape and got dumped. DJ Coleman comes in for the sack. And you see Chad Bailey, number 33, really angry with himself because he had a clear shot to Pavia to get the sack, but he was able to get immediate pressure, and that's why this play broke down. Chad Bailey, you got to break down <laughs> and make that play. But a good job getting pressure, not allowing Pavia to get comfortable, and then his teammate comes and cleans up the play. Pavia keeps it on the fake jet sweep. A flag comes in on the far side near the line of scrimmage. Martez Manuel made the tackle as Pavia is a little slow to get up. And that's the concern you have when you've got a quarterback that's not a big guy running between the tackles. That five yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot and we will replay second down. And we'll check on Pavia when we come back. He has shown a lot of heart tonight. Let's hope he's okay. Diego Pavia, the New Mexico State starting quarterback, a little shaken up after his latest run. Let's see if we can find out where he got nicked up. 
he felt awkward right there. Watch his left knee, the way he falls. His body's kind of in an awkward position, and then those defenders fell on top of him. But it was great to see him be able to walk off the field. And it brings in Gavin Frakes, who's actually started more games than Pavia this year. Five starts this season compared to four for his counterpart. Here's a guy with all the tools in the world. 6'4", 220, true freshman from Norman, Oklahoma. Grew up down the road from OU. This is his first snap tonight. On second down and six, they give it up the middle to Jamani Jones. He'll pick up two yards to bring up third down and four. But Frakes was originally committed to Princeton, but he flipped to New Mexico State last December. So was that 3,000 miles, give or take? Yes. Bit of a switch. And that's an interesting switch. How's this for your second snap? Third down. John Brady, the motion man. Frakes can run it a little himself, testing the edge, and he gets stopped. Chris Abrams' drain was in there first. And this should be four down territory for New Mexico State right around the Mizzou 40. And one, once again, this New Mexico State team is trying to get to the edge. They are just not fast enough. When you've got a penetrating up the field type of defense like Missouri, it's very difficult to get to the edge. I think they're better suited trying to hit it up the middle in between the tackles, especially between the guard and the right guard and the center. That's where the power running game has been most successful throughout the season behind Yaro and Presadio. That is where I think you need to run the football. 0 for 1 on fourth down tonight. Play clocks at 2. I formation. Frakes throws complete. First down, Aggies. And a whole lot more. That's Eric Marsh, the redshirt senior from Buckeye, Arizona. Abrams Drain brought him down after a gain of 21, and Abrams Drain is a little shaken up. And Marsh does a good job of selling like he's getting ready to block, and then he dips and makes himself big for his quarterback. And then he's able to plant that foot and get north and south and get an additional 20 yards. So a good job by Marsh. That's Marsh's second catch of the season. First one went for 10 yards. That one went for 21. And the thing about that, you see a Marsh come in, when you think about game planning and getting ready, they probably said when 48 is in the game, he's blocking. He's only had one reception the entire season. Don't worry about him going out for a pass. And you kind of see that on that play. They were expecting him to be a lead blocker. Look who's back in there, Diego Pavia. The guy's a gamer, man. Absolute. Just a good football player. Credit to Gavin Frakes, who came in, got the job done, kept the drive going, now inside the red zone. This is the Aggies' first time inside the Tigers' 20. On the ground, right up the middle, Jones shakes free of a tackle and picks up nine. And a good job by Jamani Jones, but watch the offensive line. You see guys getting up, covering up those second-level defenders. That's what you want to do from the three interior linemen. Get to the second level. Give your back the lane that he needs to get north and south and get down the field. He ran right through Devin Nicholson, who's 6'2", 224. He was hanging on for dear life. Second down and one. They run the option. Space for Star Thomas. He is inside the five and in for the touchdown. What a run by Star Thomas using that 225 pound frame. And Star Thomas just decided on that play he was not going to go down. He was going to get the touchdown. He broke about four tackles right there. One, two, three. He just ran through defenders and did not allow them to get him down. They bring out Ethan Albertson for the point after. And New Mexico State has seven after a 10 play 75 yard drive that took up over six minutes. You see the fourth down play right here. You get it to Marsh. You get the first down. That is what you needed to extend the drive. And then they get it to Star, And he powers himself over the goal line through the defenders for the touchdown for New Mexico State. 
Mexico State is on the board baby down 28 7 after a long touchdown drive 10 plays 75 yards 613 kept it alive on a successful fourth down and two when the backup quarterback Gavin Frakes came in and kept the drive alive. 429 to play in the third quarter as that is a short kick almost like an onside kick this could be trouble who's got it just inside the 30 it's a scrum and Missouri was unprepared you've got to be prepared for that dude this happened to them against Vanderbilt earlier this year it was because of the win on a more traditional kickoff but you got to know and be prepared for this to possibly happen they lucked and up on this because the ball Mizzou was ball. bouncing around. Well, they lucked up because the ball was bouncing around. Ooh. And I thought they had two or three opportunities to recover this football. That was dicey. You see right there, the ball is moving. Wow. Credit Brett Money on the kickoff. That was really well done. And I believe that was Nathaniel Pease, who is the one yellow gold jersey among a swarm of Aggies. And speaking of Mizzou running backs, Tavares Jones is now in there. The 5'9", 197 true freshman from El Paso. In motion, Brady Cook takes a snap, but a flag comes down and a whistle blows to stop the play before it starts. Ball start on the offense number seven five yard penalty still first down. Well you Hedrick staying warm down there. We expected to see a little more Tavares Jones than we have big for this is the first time we've called his name Eli Drinkwitz told us yesterday they might try to work 22 in there a little bit because he's so explosive. I feel deceived <laughs> <laughs> flat out <laughs> deceived run amok led astray yes. hoodwink bamboozle. <laughs> yeah a little bit. Now Cody Schrader's back in there. And Cook pumps, keeps, tries to escape right up the middle. He'll pick up two. Isaiah Reed, who the coaching staff has been raving about, big 98, makes the tackle, and they're calling for some medical attention. That's 91, Justin Segura. Redshirt junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. And while they check on him, let's go to our Fansville College Football Update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. A couple of tight ones for top four teams. Michigan and TCU both survived. The, the TCU one was just unbelievable. I don't know how they keep getting away with it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Griffin Kell, they, they run the field goal unit team on with like 10 seconds left in a running clock. And they win another one come from behind. It's unbelievable. But that's why you practice it. It's called a scramble yes. play. You Credit Sonny Dykes. It. Credit Sonny Dykes, who's doing just a bang up job in his first year in Fort Worth. Uh, you don't see it on your screen right now, but another top five team is in trouble. Tennessee is in the other Columbia tonight. They're at South Carolina. They're trailing 42 to 31 late in the third quarter. So uh, defense optional in that game. And you know what you see in that ball game? You see the freshman Oklahoma Spencer Rattler mm. playing in that football game. We, everybody's been kind of waiting to see that Spencer Rattler and I think you see it in this ball game. Albeit it's at the end of the season but what a great win this would be for oh, yeah. Rattler and for that program and Coach Beamer. Yeah, dude's been balling 19 of 24 288 and four touchdowns tonight for Rattler. Remember South Carolina lost at home to these Missouri Tigers when they were ranked South Carolina was earlier in the year. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Cook keeper all the way bouncing it outside Brady Cook out of bounds with a first down Mizzou. And once again a design quarterback draw watch the center number 55 Connor Tolleson. He gets out the field and Cook follows him and then he cuts off of him. Good job. Although Tolleson got a no hitter. You got to hit somebody. When you're out there. <laughs> but a good job being and getting in front of this quarterback and giving him a lane to get up the field. That was a gain of 15, and here comes Tavares Jones back in the game. Fake it on the sweep. Cook stands, delivers. There's Jones, and here's the speed down to the 25. 
It's Tavares Jones' first career catch and fourth total touch. And you see the explosiveness. The coaching staff talked about getting him the football because of how explosive he is. He gets out of the backfield. Nobody goes with him. Brady delivers a strike down the field to him, and you see the speed when he gets the reception and squeezes the football. That one went for 32. On the sweep, Burden was in the backfield, and he's wrestled out of bounds. Right side of your screen, look out, Toski Dove talking a little junk to Cyrus Dumas of New Mexico State. Donovan King playing the stud for the Aggies. Involved in another tackle. By the way, one more score from around the country. Arkansas 42, Ole Miss 6 in Fayetteville. Razorbacks come here Friday for the regular season finale. Cook keeps and throws. That's Ryan Horsecamp again. Scored his first career touchdown back in the first half. This one goes for nothing if they're lucky to bring up third down. And what's interesting about that ball game, the stakes that come with oh, yeah. that ball game after Thanksgiving, you've got to win that ball game to become bowl eligible. Right. Arkansas will secure bowl eligibility tonight, moving to six and five, barring a miracle by Ole Miss. Under two minutes now in the third quarter. Pete's the running back to the left of Cook. And I feel pretty confident uh, that miracle is not going to happen. <laughs> if you were a betting man. If I were a betting yeah. man. There's Cook, delivers over the middle. Bannister, another first down conversion for him on third down. And you know what I like about that play from Cook? He didn't lead his receiver. He threw it to where he was, not where he was going to be. Because if he leads him on that play, he's going to lead him right into the defender. And Bryce Jackson is coming downhill. That's how you protect your receivers when you can see what they can't. Bannister, the former walk-on, continues to produce. There goes Burden in space. He is filthy right to the house. Touchdown, Tigers. And there are some ankles on the five-yard line right now. <laughs> I want you to watch <laughs> number 11. He's still trying to find his ankles right now. <laughs> Where'd he go? Dylan Early, I understand, man. I mean, you've got a, a guy coming around with that kind of speed and that kind of juke ability. He's looking for his ankles now. Burden's second touchdown tonight, his third career multi-score game in his freshman season. Mevis with the extra point. Oh, and now we've got a little extracurricular. Well, you know some attitudes are going to happen. Yeah. But once again, you see the speed by Burden. He gets to the outside. and. You know, I mean, what can you say? Dylan Earl, you're right there to be able to make the play, but you've got a guy that has a little bit more wiggle than you do. There aren't many guys who have as much wiggle as Luther Burden. He was the top recruit and the prize of the best recruiting class in Missouri history this year. He's a freshman from St. Louis. He played his senior year at East St. Louis, which is actually in Illinois across the Mississippi River. Consensus five star, a top 10 player, and ESPN's class of 22 2022 rankings a huge get for Drinkwitz. And what's crazy is you look at the other star receiver Dominic Lovett. He's from the same high school. So they've done a good job of getting talent from that East St. Louis high school and bringing them down here to Columbia and you see the effects when they get the football in their hands. They're able to be special players. That's yeah, interesting. Burden and Lovett were like two ships passing in the night at East St. Louis. They didn't play together. Burden transferred in from Cardinal Ritter. After he won a hoop state title with the Lions, and he went over to East St. Louis and continued to produce. Back to a 28 point lead for Mizzou as that kickoff skips out of bounds. The NFL returns to Mexico with our Week 11 Monday Night Football matchup at Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers take on DeAndre Hopkins and the Cardinals in a crucial NFC West game. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, Deportes and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6, or should I say at 6.
Christian McCaffrey with the 49ers, pretty good fit. Well, you see the effect because it used to be Debo Samuels <laughs> in the 49ers, but since McCaffrey's gotten there, he's become the star that we knew he was prior to all of the injuries that he had in Carolina. And you add him with a healthy Debo, now you've got yourself something you could. Oh, eat. man. Not just those guys. Ayuk, Kittle, they've got an embarrassment of riches in San Francisco. Under a minute now in the third quarter. 35-7 Tigers over the Aggies. Diego Pavia back in there for New Mexico State. Gives it to Star Thomas. And he gets blasted in a hurry. And good penetration by the defense in the middle of that formation. Not giving Star Thomas anywhere to go with the football. You see all the penetration. He had nowhere. He tried to plan and get north and south. Once he planted, they were right there waiting on him to bring him down. Might be the final play of the third quarter. Thomas again. And that's a gain of one, maybe two, as Darius Robinson comes in there on the stop. And again, as we're talking a little bit after the whistle, that'll take us to the fourth quarter. And Realist George, number 99, made a good play on that play. He was able to butt the center, uh, read and react, and get over and be a part of that tackle. Great job by the defender on that play but a better job by Schrader getting to the end zone. And this Missouri team has once again put another score on the board. And New Mexico State, you just got to try and hang in there at this point. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It is senior night in Columbia. And Mizzou leads 35-7 over the visiting Aggies of New Mexico State. Drew Carter, Forrest Conley back upstairs with you at Faroe Field. Diego Pavia trying to make something happen. Sheds one tackle, throws complete near the sticks. This will be close. Rakestraw came in to make the stop on Justice Powers. Based on forward progress, Jerry Kill's team might have a first down. And you have to wonder, was that a face mask? Uh, good job by Pavia breaking away from the defender. <laughs> she, <laughs> you see Coach Drinkwitz is kind of looking like, I mean, can we make the play? I mean, he's right there. Well, it wasn't a face mask, but a great job breaking away. Uh, it's a hard guy to evade, DJ Coleman, 6'5", 263. What happens often is these defenders are coming downhill so fast, and when you see the quarterback, you get excited. So you try to go into them, and when you've got an elusive player by, like Pavia, you have plays that are made like that. On first and ten, Jamani Jones was going the wrong way for a second. Ends up with a head of steam to pick up five or six on first. You are watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Dr. Pepper. Thanks for hanging with us here at Mizzou. Hope you've enjoyed your college football Saturday. It's been a wild one. I always say that every week. Uh, this one certainly has been with three top five teams getting a really stiff test. Still waiting on Tennessee. They could still go down against South Carolina. I think it's been a very revealing weekend. Teams that we thought were something are not what we thought they were. There's Star Thomas made one Tiger miss. He'll still lose a couple. Chad Bailey came in to clean it up. So you're going full uh, Denny Green on us. Absolutely. They are who we thought they were, or they're not? They're not who we thought they were. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> That's mean, the remix. Well, that old Miss, that score is very surprising. Yes. 42 6, Arkansas. Oklahoma's big, uh, up big on Oklahoma State. Crushing. That's surprising as well. Crushing. And then let's not overlook how close to Michigan. Illinois game was and the Maryland Ohio State now can say both of them were probably looking ahead but Michigan yeah. lost their best player on offense right. so it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to get back because they're going to need him to play and beat an Ohio State ball club that will probably come in a little angry look out intercepted and this is going the other way pick six Mizzou Dalen Carnell takes it to the house and takes a spill on the track Pavia is eyeballing his receiver and a good job reading the play 
and getting down the field. And watch Rick Strong. He's running down the field. He's going to make sure Pavia doesn't get a shot on his teammate, and it allows Carnell to get to the end zone. A little bit of extracurricular activity after the play by Rick Straw. The official decided not to throw the flag, but a great defensive play, a good read, but Pavia, he's eyeballing his receiver the entire time. The cornerback read it, jumped that route, and was able to get to the end zone. Carnell's second interception of the season, also had one at Florida. Brings it back 40 yards to the house. Sure, what the delay is on the extra point. But either way, Mevis is out there. The thicker kicker to make it 42 7. All Tigers here on senior night. Carnell with a 40 yard pick six. As if Mizzou needed any extra. A couple of flags on the extra points. We'll clean this up before we step aside. I see three flags out there. Extracurricular, some guys. I saw a guy from um, New Mexico State throw a punch. It's going to be interesting to see what the officials decide on this play. The result of the play is that the try is good. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense number six, blow to the head. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. All right, so we will take the break. Dalen Carnell, give me that turnover jacket. Mizzou 42, New Mexico State 7. Folks, college football rivalry weekend begins Thanksgiving night. Here are two of our featured matchups. Florida takes on number 19, Florida State Friday, and then number seven, USC. Host number 18 Notre Dame at L.A. Coliseum Saturday. You know they're playing it in L.A. because it's actually late in the season and USC isn't tough enough to go to Notre Dame at this time. Both begin 730 Eastern 430 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. And by the way the Trojans are down one at UCLA at halftime as we speak. But I know the one Forrest Conley really wants to talk about is Florida Florida State. How are you feeling about that one partner. Well, I think Florida State is playing the best football they've played in years. They yeah. finally found who they found out who they are. They are a running team. You've got Jordan Travis who's playing some of the best football that he's played in his life. And I think this team is on the up and up. It will be a tough ball game against Florida because that's a rivalry game. Those are guys that played with each other and against each other in high school. And you know this Florida team is a little bit embarrassed about what happened today at Vanderbilt. Oh yeah. Gavin Frakes is in a quarterback for New Mexico State. And they start on the ground and that's blown up in a hurry. Yeah, hey, Big Phil, I mean, you're the guy who's got your finger on the pulse of that program, so tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Mike Norvell is absolutely the guy. Absolutely, and Coach Atkins with that mm -hmm. offensive line, what they've done in the portal, getting those players, and the players have bought in to the program, and I'm interested to see what this recruiting cycle looks like because of the success that they've had, not only against Miami, but against the other powers that they've played. What a grab on the interception! That's Jelani Williams. Frakes was trying to get rid of it. Williams looked like Spider-Man snatching that. <laughs> Rolling on the you field. See the athletic ability to stretch, squeeze the football, get a foot down, and get the interception. A great job by the defender reading the quarterback, knowing where he wanted to go when he tried to get rid of that football down the field. Position, two interceptions on the last three plays. And Mizzou starts in plus territory. And here we go. There's a roar at Faroe Field because 21 is in at quarterback. Sam Horn, the four star recruit out of Collins Hill outside Atlanta, and a guy the Mizzou fans are stoked about. 6'4, 219 with a rocket arm. They keep it on the ground to start. The freshman gives it to another freshman, Tavares Jones. Trevor Brohard makes the tackle. But to just give you an idea of how talented Sam Horn is, he might have been a top 100 pick in the MLB draft out of high school if teams knew 
that he wanted to play pro baseball right now. Instead, he said, I'm going to play quarterback in the SEC. I've watched this kid for years. I live about five miles from Collins Hills High School, so I've been able to see him. And he played with another great player down there. Uh, you know, this kid has all of the intangibles to be a special player for this program moving forward. On second down and nine. I think Tigers fans aren't sure about him taking that much contact, but he does <laughs> pick up the first down to move the chains. So welcome to Mizzou, Sam Horn. But he's a big kid, a good looking kid, and he runs the ball really well. He protect himself, protected himself on that play. He didn't take any unnecessary contact. So I don't mind him running the football. Injured Aggie is Isaiah Reed. We'll step aside and check on the junior after this. Kick off your week 11 NFL Sunday at 10 Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kickoff. Get your fantasy lineup set. Make sure you've got the right dudes in there as we come down the home stretch of the fantasy football season. You know, before we went to break, we talked about Horn. I told you I live a little bit five miles away from him. He played with another great player on that team, Travis Hunter. You know, was he any talented. good? <laughs> I think he was pretty good. Yeah. Kind of decent. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> Number one recruit in the country. Went to Jackson State. And a truly groundbreaking commitment. Something we really have never seen before. Here goes Sam Horn. He slings it. That is caught. It's Bannister inside the five. Down at the one-yard line. That looked like a four-seam fastball from Sam Horn, but there is a flag. Two flags. Right now, it's a 30-yard gain. These are back near the line of scrimmage. Ineligible right player downfield on the offense number 75. That five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. We will replay first down. Mitchell Walters. And although Walters was down the field, Devin Kirkland is right there, number one, to make a play. But what a pass by Horn to get it right over his hand and right over his hands to the receiver. You see the ability. What's going to be interesting, Drew, is this spring, the competition between Cook and Horn. Because Cook has shown that he can play in hostile environments. He's shown that he has the moxie uh, to win games with this ball club. But you've got Sam Horn with such a big upside. Mm -hmm. You know, so that'll be an interesting battle this spring. First down and 15. Horn throws again, and you see the big arm as that one had a little too much dip on the chip trying to connect with Bannister. Just a bit outside. <laughs> <laughs> he is a great pitcher. He can throw up to 95, is what we heard from his high school days at Collins Hill. He's actually on the baseball roster for Mizzou and will play for the Tigers this spring. It's a big reason why he chose MU. He had offers from everyone. Four star recruit. He was a top 200 player in the ESPN 300. Mizzou said, yeah, you can play baseball, and he's going to do both. Gives it to Jones, the freshman, with the edge. Out of bounds to set up third down and manageable. Devlin Kirkland gave him the encouragement to go out of bounds. You see the power by Jones. We talked about his speed and his change of direction ability, but you see the balance to stay up on his feet, and he doesn't go down. He takes a hard hit. And think about this Missouri program. You've got Horn and you've got Jones to build around. I mean, Luther Burden. A bright future for this program. I'm with you, man. The recruiting has been great under Eli Drinkwitz. And he's keeping home talent home. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Cook throws. Bannister got clocked. There was Kirkland, the senior from Lexington, Mississippi. And you don't like to see that for Bannister. And that's kind of a young quarterback play. You set your guy up. You've got to throw off that safety, those linebackers, those defensive backs. You can't allow them to read your eyes and lead your receiver into them. Oh, that's the last thing you want to see. Barrett Bannister celebrating senior day. One of the best former walk on players in the country. Hope he's OK. Brings out Harrison Mevis for a 43 yard attempt. The longer the better for Harrison Mevis and that one is pure. The thicker kicker makes it 45 seven. He's now 14 of 16 from 40 plus this season. ESPN College Football Primetime. 
is presented by delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Welcome back. Faro Field Memorial Stadium. Yeah, they're getting ready for Thanksgiving. It's next week. How about that? No wonder it's so cold. Actually, a really nice night. I think. We were all kind of afraid of the big, bad, cold weather. It's not been that bad. It's like mid 20s. Not too much wind. Nice and comfortable up here in the booth. For a catch for New Mexico State, we'll leave the Aggies at the 25. Jordan Parker, Metro Junior from Chandler, Arizona, hauled that kick in. Looks like Gavin Frakes. We'll get the keys again to this New Mexico State offense. And I think for the young quarterback, you go with the short, quick pass game. You want to get him some success. You want him to have some success moving forward. So I think you give him easy passes, something that they can get some first downs and move the football down the field. And they start with the sweep around the right side. That's Bryce Childress. Redshirt sophomore from St. Louis, bit of a homecoming for him. Transfer from Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. And you see him cut back because you're not going to get around the edge. That's a good job of recognizing there was nothing there. Till just planted that foot, got north and south, and got positive yards. Now, Gavin Frakes, good to see him get some run down the stretch here against a quality opponent. We mentioned the frame 6'4, 220, prototypical stuff. Their offensive coordinator, Tim Beck, said he saw him at a camp when Beck and Kill were coaching at TCU. On second down and five, Frakes will keep and try to get the edge and scamper out of bounds, just shy of the marker, I think, to set up third down and one. Arden Walker was in there on the stop. And you see Jerry Kill there as the interim head coach at TCU for the last four games last season after. Gary Patterson parted ways with the Horn Frogs. And Tim Beck told us that you know, if they were still at TCU, if they needed a quarterback, they would have given this guy a look to play at TCU. Third down and one. That play is stopped in the backfield by Walker. It'll set up fourth down. I think TCU is pretty happy with the guy today. I think right they, yeah, they're doing okay. <laughs> Max Duggan, another comeback win for the Horn Frogs. And that was a game full of drama. But that is the beauty of college football, what you run. saw today, not only in that ball game, but in other ball games, as well as what we're seeing now with some of these late SEC scores, yeah. some teams that we just knew were going to go in and handle their business that are not handling their business whatsoever. Yeah, Tennessee down 56 to 31 right now at South Carolina with 10 minutes left. Josh Carlson's punt is a short one. Luther Burden watches it bounce, and Mizzou will start just outside their own 30. So Brady Cook appears to be done for the night. A solid day at the office. He was flawless in the second half. And using those legs again, I mean, this guy has got tons of speed. Well, Brady Cook was cooking at the start of the game, and he was cooking in the second and third quarter. With the pass down the field, he went vertical. He went to the outside. He found his tight ends. He found his running backs. He found his receivers. And they made plays for him down the field. And when he did not see what he wanted, he used his feet to get first downs and make big plays, averaging the first down every time he ran the football. Now the third quarterback through the rotation comes in. It's Jack Abraham. And they keep it on the ground on the first play. Tavares Jones is stopped in his tracks. Jack Abraham. Folks. This is not a typo. His fifth college and his seventh season. Early enrollee at Louisiana Tech all the way back in 2016, redshirted. Then spent 2017 at Northwest Mississippi Community College, then three years at Southern Miss where he was the starter. Then he redshirted at Mississippi State last year, and now he's finishing at Mizzou. On second down and 10, he throws to the sideline complete. Out of bounds near first down yardage. That's Makai Miller with DJ McCullough in coverage. And this young man is taking advantage of every opportunity, and you've got to love Young it. man? <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's still a young man. Yeah. yeah, he is. He is. 
How about that one of 23 players in FBS to play in their seventh season. No one did that when you were playing right. Big Absolutely Funk? not. Third down and one Jones burrows forward looks like the ball came out Aggies say they've got it. You got to unpack the dog pile. And I hate that for Jack Abraham because he's getting an opportunity on senior night to play. First down. Okay, Stays good. with Mizzou. Stays okay, with good. Mizzou. Okay. Because you would have hated that for him. The second play in the game, that senior night. Out. And it's just sitting there. How is that not? I think that's New Mexico State yeah, ball. I'm just trying to figure how is that not New Mexico State football? I think the really replay officials that saw the that and they're going to look, that look at that. You have to feel bad for Jack Abraham. Yeah. He finally gets in the ball game, senior night, gets one play, and then the second play he's in the game, they fumble the football. Uh, Mike Edwards, 31, looked like he came in there for New Mexico State. And I think they might have conclusive, indisputable evidence <laughs> here, Carter. I think this will be a quick review. I think so. They're looking to see if the ball was out before the runner was down. I think there's no question about that. That this should be a quick review. And the, the rallying cry for the Missouri defense should be get the ball back for Jack. It rhymes. I was a rapper in my previous <laughs> life. <laughs> MC Big Foe. Big Foe is a good name. Now the ruling was that the ball carrier was down, not that Mizzou recovered. Again, should be quick. And here comes Lee Hedrick. After review, video evidence shows that it was a fumble recovered by New Mexico State. It will be their ball at the 44-yard line, first down. All right, Jared Kill's team has a little life with 6.38 to play. Good to see Jerry Kill back on the sideline. It really is. I mean, he left Minnesota not by choice or not by, you know, being fired. He, he left in the middle of the 2015 season when he had some health issues, struggled with epilepsy and also cancer. He says he's doing great now. He's lost about 20 to 25 pounds and he's excited for this next challenge. But he, he's a guy who's been candid about, you know, all the stuff that he felt like he lost. I mean, it takes a long time to get to the top of the profession, and then all of a sudden he, he's right back down toward the bottom of the FBS. And I'll say this, with everything that he's gone through, he looks great, man. He does. And the conversation we had with him, it was an awesome uh, call. Uh, and some of the things that he told us, I mean, he was one of the best coaches I've ever talked to. Yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation with Jerry Kill. He's confident in what they're building in New Mexico State. Frakes throws. That is complete over the middle. Inside the Mizzou 30, the ball might have come free. Official comes in. I think they're ruling incomplete pass. Terrell Warner had it. No, I think he. I don't know. He made a football move. I think it. Yeah, I, there's no way that's an incomplete pass, but that was the signal, and they're backing him up. He caught the ball and made a football move. Maybe he never had it. Yeah, maybe he never had possession. Yeah, from our angle, it looked like he had possession of the football and was making the football move. It was Warner's third catch of the year for a second. And now it's third down and nine. Five on the timer. Frakes and New Mexico State have to go. Play clock's at zero. And there's the flag from the back judge. Delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. And I think the play clock got to zero because the New Mexico State Ball Club thought that that was a reception. So everyone ran up to where the ball was, so they had to all go back to the original line of scrimmage and all of the time that it took because you saw he had his hands up in the air like that was a catch. Yeah, that was a weird one. Now third and 14 for Frakes. The freshman from Norman, Oklahoma. Feels the heat, steps up, throws on the run, complete. There you see all the potential for the freshman QB. First down to Trevor Stevens, his second catch of the season. And a good job by Frakes climbing the pocket. 
the tackles did a good job of keeping the width. You get that third kick step, and at that point, you can turn your shoulders and run those defenders past the quarterback's level, but you've got to get three kick steps. Now the quarterback is able to climb the pocket and find the receiver down the field. 18-yard gain. How about freshman from Norman to a freshman from Lubbock, Texas? Big 12 to Big 12. Frakes makes one man miss. Stumbling on the turf here at Faro Field. And the clock continues to wind and will pass five minutes after Drayden Norwood made the tackle. One more note on Coach Kill. It's a three game win streak for New Mexico State. It started with a win over New Mexico. And Coach Kill told us, hey, if I beat New Mexico every year, I'm going to have a job forever. <laughs> I don't need to sign the contract, I'll be just fine. That was kind of a weird story coaching without a contract. He's, he says they'll probably figure it out soon now that the story is out. Frakes lobs it right side incomplete but tons of contact and it draws a flag. Drayden Norwood was on the coverage trying to find Cordell David. He panicked and grabbed him didn't turn around to locate the football. Pass interference on the defense number 19. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down. And all Norwood has to do is turn around to try and locate the football. You can have contact, but you see the receiver got inside leverage on him, and he grabbed him because he got a little nervous. Cordell Davis is getting down the field. You just got to make a play on the football. He's a redshirt freshman, so these things are things that he will learn and he will get better at. But it's good live competition for him, and it's a good teaching mechanism for him, for him and the coaching staff. Motion man Bryce Childress. Frakes keeps, evades. Frakes still upright into the end zone. Touchdown, New Mexico State. Whoa, Gavin Frakes. And a good job by Frakes following his blockers, following his players to get to the end zone. You see him following the blocks, allowing those blocks to develop and powering over to the end zone. It brings out Ethan Albertson to make it a 31 point game. Albertson's extra point is good. 12 yard touchdown run. He looks shifty. Gavin Frakes in for six. Aggies showing fight. Gavin Frakes with a touchdown that could be significant to some watching at home. Making it a 31 point game as Missouri leads 45 14 with 421 to play. In this fourth quarter Drew Carter Forrest Connolly back with you. Glad to be here for senior day. At Faroe Field senior night really you might be wondering hey they play a home game next week Friday against Arkansas why are they doing it tonight well. That's the day after Thanksgiving coach Drinkwitz wanted. Everyone to get a chance to be celebrated in front of the fans before all the students went home for Thanksgiving break. And even though the crowd has thinned out here, still more fans than there were at uh, Kyle Field in College Station today. Missouri takes over on offense again, and eight different Tigers have caught a pass today for Coach Eli Drinkwitz's team, led by Barrett Bannister celebrating Senior Day, the grad student from Fayetteville, Arkansas, who says. He's really a Missouri resident now. We saw Bannister leave early. Hope he's OK after taking a big shot over the middle. And eight different receivers have caught a pass this evening. That's a good job of spreading the ball around for Missouri. Three different quarterbacks as well. Jack Abraham is back in there. We've seen Brady Cook who started and then Sam Horn came in for a drive. And now Abraham is in. They keep it on the ground to start a new drive around the left side and chopped down before the play could really get going. B.J. Harris, the sophomore from Chattanooga. And a good job by Malachi McLean coming up to make that shoestring tackle because there were no other defenders. And if B.J. Harris is able to keep his feet, I think he's still running. 
Might have gone all the way to the Rock M. M Rock sounds better. M Rock? M Rock. <laughs> M -Rock. I like that. <laughs> kind of sounds like a Fortune 500 company. That's a cool tradition. Uh, the seniors, if they win on Senior Day, which it looks like they will, they get to take one of those whitewashed rocks from the iconic M. Harris again. They also get carried off the field after grabbing their rock from behind the north end zone. I would have liked to have seen what that would have been like if uh, I would have been here and them trying to carry me off the field. <laughs> Bust out the horse and buggy. Yes. No, uh -oh. come on, man. You're svelte. It'd be easy to get you up. Come on, man. We're not going to lie about that. <laughs> Two flags come in pre-snap. I accept my bigness. Snap infraction on the offense direction. False start on the offense number 69. Five yard penalty to third down. That's Drake Heismeyer. Uh, Big Foe is the guy who played at Florida State in the heyday national champion. You must have played in a lot of blowouts like this. What are you trying to learn or accomplish down the stretch of a game that's already in hand? Well, I was always on the team that was doing the blowing out. Exactly. So. Um, you know, for us, it allowed for some of the younger talent to get the opportunity to have live action because, you know, in practice, you're not really going live like that, uh, you know, uh, to the whistle. But, you know, in a game, you're going live. And this is a great opportunity for younger players to get some experience because everyone knows you're only an ankle sprain away from getting out there on the field. Uh, and that's how you win championships when your backups and your third team guys are ready to play and can step in and be productive for you. So it's a great opportunity for the team that's winning, but it's also a good opportunity for the team that's losing because as a coaching staff, you're watching to see who's continuing to play through the whistle or who stopped because the guys that continue to play hard are the guys that you know you can go to battle with. After the drop by B.J. Harris, it brings out Jack Stonehouse for his first punt tonight. New Mexico State still has all three timeouts. Lawrence Dixon calls for the fair catch around his own 17 yard line. So with 224 to play and three timeouts left for the Aggies, they will try to inch a little bit closer here before the book is closed on this one. Mentioned Mizzou is home for Arkansas Friday to wrap up the regular season. New Mexico State goes to Liberty to finish their their 11 game regular season. Again, they're an FBS independent. They will play a full conference USA schedule next year. And how big once again is that game next week against Arkansas? Oh, yeah. It's a game Missouri needs to win to get bowl eligible. But Arkansas will come in here feeling really, really good about themselves because they're not only bowl eligible, but they will have put a beat down oh, yeah. on Ole Miss. 42 to 12. Now 42 to 20 Arkansas over Ole Miss midway through the fourth. The battle line trophy will be up for grabs here in Como next week on Friday. Back to back carries for Star Thomas to begin this drive for New Mexico State. Takes it out near the 35. Again, all three timeouts for the Aggies. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. And although New Mexico State is not going to win this ball game, there are some positives to take away from this. You got Gavin Frakes and what he's been able to do in the short time. He's got some passes down the field. Diego Pavilla is everything that we thought he was. He's a gamer. He's a tough guy. And we've seen some good runs by Star Thomas. Frakes on the give. Thomas changes directions. And is brought down after a short game with a buck 20 to play in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Jamani Jones has looked pretty good. Both quarterbacks have played well. Plenty of reasons for optimism for the Aggies. Eli Drinkwitz's team will move to five and six. Try to be bowl eligible for the third time in as many years under Coach Drink. I mean, look at this Missouri ball club. They're right there. Look out, Frakes goes down. Norwood got him on the corner blitz. 
you know, Franks has got to feel that. You've got to feel that pressure, get rid of the football, or make a move. And that'll come with more time, more playing time, more experience. He'll be able to feel that pressure. That is Norwood's first sack of the season. And I think that's on the offensive tackle, Carson Ferris. He blocked to the inside. When you've got an outside man, you've got to make sure that you are kicking back. And if he doesn't come, then you can go inside and help the guard. Third down and 15. The final play tonight is a short run for the Aggies. And that'll do it. Eli Drinkwitz's team still alive in the hunt for bowl eligibility as they take care of business against New Mexico State tonight. All right, that'll do it from Columbia. Final score 45 14. Mizzou wins by 31. For our entire ESPN crew, led by Brad Shapiro and David Ashbrock, I'm Drew Carter, for Forrest Conley and everyone here in Como. Thanks for watching this presentation of the SEC on ESPN. Enjoy your Sunday.